I'm getting started on the bottom part of the fuselage. And so first thing I've done is I put a center line down the table. Well, first I freshened up the table and, and uh, cleaned it up. And then put a center line down the table and now I'm going to lay out all the sections. So I finished um, laying out the plans for the bottom fuselage and um, now it's time to bend these long drones on the outside. So basically from station E, which is oh, right here, backwards is a long flooring general curve. Forward of that is a bunch of straights. This is what I created to uh, bend the long that long general curve. So I 3D printed some three inch wheels with a three quarter inch profile. There's three of them here, two on the outside, one here that moves up and down. Um, this is just a piece of half inch plywood on each side and a double that three quarter plywood in the center here to, to make a U shaped channel that the wheels sit in that has some strength to it. Use some oak to make some levers here just to get this wheel in the center. And then these up here allow me to tighten up this center one so that I can start creating the bend. So anyhow, I'll put a tube in here and you can see how it works. Before I start running this back and forth, I'm going to put one of these blocks on the end. Uh, I showed them in one of the other videos. But they're a square block with some clamped screws and they've been slotted so they'll clamp down on the tube. Anyhow, and I use them to keep a reference. So the reference in this case will be so that I always am rolling this the same without any twist. Like one time I'm not putting it through this way and one time that way. So anyhow, I'm just going to clamp it on here. And then I'm going to put a clamp on it. It just helps me give a little uh, visual reference. So I put a clamp on it like this. And now I've got this straight Uh, line and I can if I keep that vertical then that curve will all be in the same plane. All right, so I've actually marked this again. There's station E. I want station E to stop at the center roller. So I just put station E on the center roller and then I put a tape here so I'll know how far to pull this tube this way. We're bending the aft end which is that side. So I'll be pulling it that way and pushing it back. You can see we've got a nice arc started. And I put screws at the end of each station because I find it easier right now when I'm not trying to clamp it to just line it up on those. And actually, we're done. I've got a little extra bend here, but it's real easy to take out at this point. That down. And really, if I want, I can just push it to the screw. So that's the end of that part. Now I'll start bending these individual stations to match up here. All right, so I started bending the uh, tubing up here at the front and I've had to jury rig a little bit because I want to do work on it right where it needs to go. It makes it very easy to get the right curve and get things to line up. Anyhow, I'm not going to cover bending the tubes much uh, because if you want to see that, go look at the aileron or the horizontal stabilizer or even the rudder video that I did. I covered 
bending a lot more, but basically I'm using my 3D printed plastic dies. I put some backup blocks and some other clamps on this case to keep them from ripping out of the table. And then I just put a pipe over it when possible. All right, so this is station E. So back there's that sweeping curve. I just made this bend. So now we're touching these screws E and D. So now D here, I need to bend to get over here to C. All right, so I'm, this is the end of the, uh, well, this is the center line of the tube at this station. And so we just need to come over three eighths of an inch because it's a three quarter inch tube and that's the center line of the tube. Put a, put a block. Interesting thing is this block will be right in the way when it's time to put these cross braces in. But for right now to get this all lined up properly it works really well to uh, to uh, put them at the station and then I can move them later. So I trimmed the two longerons to the correct, well, where I need them to be. So basically, if you look here, there's the tail post. Here's the end of the fuselage, the tail post centered on that. And so the tubes are supposed to meet at the top, and they do. So I'm going to put them together here and get this tube that goes right here all fitted, and then I'll tack this together. And then as far as cutting it out for the actual uh, tail post, I'll do that after it's been bent because there's going to be, you know, it's not going to be like this. It's going to have a little angle involved in it. So now I've marked out where all the longerons have tubes intersecting them, and I'm going to go through with my wire brush and clean up those areas so that uh, when it's time to tack and weld, they will be somewhat clean. I'm just putting on my blocks here that help me orient the tube for cutting the coats. I'm going to take my protractor and measure this angle between this tube and there. I'll use my angle finder to get the right angle here. Right there. And I can just cut it. All right, so that gives me that first angle. A nice fit on that. Let's see right there. So now I need this angle and this is not a 90 degree angle so I can't just say well it's going to be 40 because that was 50. So I have to measure it and I already have and it's about 30 degrees. So I'll cut this next angle at 30 degrees. Okay so now I can test fit that. This has to be up a little bit because that block. So you can see it fits really nicely. That's how I do my copes. Uh, I have a block just like this on the other end. 
So that means that these two ends are the same rotation. So I can take this block and put it in the vise and cut its two angles and there'll be no twist. So where this one inch tube meets the three quarter inch tube, I cope the sides for three quarter, but you get a little gap there. So I tack weld it and then gap's gone. So I'm working here on this area between station D and E. And so I think I've got all this cross bracing. Yeah, that looks good, that fit on that one. So um, the cross bracing's fitted, this tube's fitted, which is station D, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and weld station D in, and weld the center of the cross bracing, just tacks, but not the corners, and that's to facilitate bending at station D and bending at station E. So I'm finished fabricating all the tubes and tacking them in place for the bottom of the fuselage. And if you're interested in fabricating the tubes more, my previous videos on the horizontal stabilizer and the rudder and the, ta and the uh, uh, elevator and the top fuselage, I cover fitting tubes. But realistically, once you've fitted a few tubes and you've got your system down, it's just repetitive. I find it enjoyable, but it's just a repetitive task. It doesn't make good videos. So, Look at those videos if you want to see more about fitting tubes. So I finished tack welding all these in place except for the cross tubes where things get bent. So now I'm going to turn this over. I'll do the other side. So the fuselage is tacked on both sides now. So what I'm going to do now is get ready to bend this front. And that front bends up a couple inches from B forward. And then there'll be a bend later in the back. So, but this section between B, C, and D doesn't get bent. So I'm going to set up these tubes under there and clamp those tubes down, the B and the, the D tube. To do that, I got some one and a half inch square tubing I had laying around. And I'm going to make some clamps. Let's a little more work than I really wanted to put into it, but I don't have anything else to really hold it down the way I want. So I got some aluminum bar stock and I'll just uh, drill some holes and uh, make them into a clamp to hold these tubes down on, the, on the, these square tubing. All right, with this clamp done, now I can tighten it up.
and line up the center line and put a mark on that tube. Just make sure I'm on the table at the same spot. I'm going to put one screw in here. Take this guy down to the table. tail up on that center line and then just put a screw there to hold that in place and then I can screw down the rest of these tubes. Alright, so now let's make sure we're still good up here. And of course it moved a little bit. center line. Alright, this is what I rigged up to uh, bend the nose here. So basically, I had the frame sitting on the one inch cross tubes on a piece of one and a half inch square tube. Now that's the one inch tube. The drawing showing you the longerons on the side, which is the three quarter inch tube. So I'm um, basically one, one and a half inches on the square tube, plus another eighth of an inch to get up to the bottom of the three quarter inch longeron. So one and five eighths above the tabletop. So I need to bring it up two inches to three and five eighths. And I've cut some blocks that are three and five eighths. So I'll, I'll use them to hold it in position and also to determine when I've got it to the right height. So then I built this little cross frame over the top and put some hooks and some tie downs to the front. This will allow me to have some pressure on it and do this by myself, which is how I'm doing it. So I'll be able to just put a little tension on those and heat it up and you know it should move along with it. Alright, this is what I rigged up to get it hot. So I'm going to use a weed burner. So a propane weed burner is not as hot a temperature as an oxacetylene flame, but this has more BTUs, so it'll actually put more heat on the target. It gets to a high enough temperature, but it's also not very precise, so I made a heat shield here to try to direct the heat to where I want the work to be and where I want it to bend. Also, it's up off the table, so hopefully I don't destroy the table. And uh, when I'm heating the other side, I've got this propane torch that I can sit here and hopefully just at least maintain the temperature and not lose too much ground when I'm switching from side to side. Anyhow, that's the theory. We'll see how it goes. Maybe still pretty hot, but it did a great job just with the propane torch. So I don't even need to use a bleed burner. I have two propane torches. I'll just set one up on each side and I'll do the other bends bent right where it should. So I controlled the heat well enough um, 
Didn't burn the table either. Look at that. Didn't fry the table or anything. I ain't it. Much easier than my brain had it. All right, so I've, I've bent the front uh, B section from B to A. So I'm all set up now to bend the, uh, the D to E section. So. See, it's starting to get a nice red glow. Now we'll just let it cool off and set in that position. All right, so here's the bend I just did from D to E, so bending that D, raising E up two and a half inches. We're on a one and a half inch tubing sitting across the one inch cross braces. So I put four inch blocks under here from this one inch tube to that one inch tube, two and a half. To get this tail, how high the tail needs to be up, down here, you have to look over here at the nose. It shows you that you're 18 inches to the center line for this flat section B to D is 18 and a half inches. And then on the tail here, it shows you that center line comes through and the tail is 3 inches above that. So, so what dimension do I need in the tail? I need my 1.5 inch spacers. Plus, this is being over the top, but I'm on the one and a half inch or one inch tubing that goes across. And actually, this whole thing's drawn to these longerons, which are three quarter. So I need to add an eighth of an inch to actually go from the one inch tube to the bottom of the three quarter. So I'll do that. So uh, plus 0.125 plus 18 and a half. Point one two five plus eighteen and a half, and then plus the three inches back here that we have to go above the center line. So I need a 23 and an eighth inch spacer to put under the tail when it's at the correct height. So I'll cut that. All right, so I've rewritten this for this last bend on the bottom on station E here. So I've got the torches set up. Um, I put this frame so this is on the next station down, so F. I've got my board cut. So I'm looking for 23 and an eighth at the rear for this setup that I have, right at the tail post. So that's that height. I also have a level, because I want to put a level on here to make sure that I don't get some twist in here, because since we're only going to hold it up in one spot in the back, we could easily get it twisted. And I'm ready to go, so I'll light the torches. Thank you. 
So here's what those bends look like. That's the front one. I'll move on down here. That's the second one. So that's uh, D. And here's E. I'm pretty much finished with the fuselage bottom. Uh, with the bending here now done, and that bending went really well, that was really easy compared to what I thought it would be. Once they started heating the joints, it probably took five minutes to bend each section. Now, there's some preparation for that, and that all made it a lot easier, but uh, the actual bending, smooth, controlled event with, uh, with uh, no hiccups or issues at all. So anyhow, with this done, I will move on to mating the top and the bottom together.